Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will show you how to create component groups in ANSYS. We will start uh, with a, in the already existing model that we had from a previous tutorial of a T-junction model with volume type elements with a transversal beam and a longitudinal beam. And on this model we create a, a couple of sections around the joint in order to consider and create a group of elements that are adjacent to the welding or that could be considered as the weld bed of the junction. So when you create a component, a component group you need to understand that you can do it with any of the entities of ANSYS. These are nodes, key points, lines, areas, volumes and elements. But the groups are created with anything that you have selected or any, any component or any part of that component that you have selected on the screen corresponding to the that particular entity that you're using. So for example, if you would create an, a group right now with volumes, it will be created with all of all of the model, all, all of the volumes that we ha here have here right now. So you want to create a if we want to create a group of the welding, we have to first select these elements, only the element that we're interested in, only the volumes that we're interested in, and then proceed to create the element, the, the group. So what we're going to do is first select these entities. You can do you can do that by going to select entities. Here we go to volumes by pick and we push OK. Here you can start selecting all of the entities. You gotta do it slowly and carefully. So we're gonna select all of these entities and sometimes it's enough just to follow where you're picking the element but sometimes you need to rotate the model because it's just too complicated to figure it out otherwise hopefully I'll be able to do it without rotating the model but I don't think that's gonna be the case because Okay, if you use the control button when you're selecting, you can rotate the model and do other operations that you would not normally be able to do. So I'm going to move this and then I'm going to rotate it. When you release the control button yeah, and you can pick again the other entities, I'm going to unpick that entity. I'm going to pick these other two. And just you gotta be very careful when you're picking stuff because sometimes you might pick something that you don't want to pick and you don't realize it's there. I'm gonna select these other two. I'm gonna go here and select this one and that one, that one, and that. I am not sure about this last one, so better just to rotate again and be paying attention to all the groups that you're creating all the stuff that you're selecting to create that group so that one that one there and that one there that one there and that one there once we got that we hit the button ok and we zoom out we have almost all the welding we I missed the ones that are here so what I'm going to do is go to select entities, volumes, also select, OK, and I'm going to select these ones. I hit OK, and there we go. We have the welding. All the regions are associated to the welding. So now we're going to go and create a group. By the, to do that, we're going to select component assembly, create component. We're going to call it welding welding and the entity it's volumes we hit ok and ok now we have this we go to select everything go back to fit the view and the ISO view again ok now in the previous tutorial for this T-junction model we created we apply some embedments on the areas of the transversal beam so we're gonna select those areas and create a group named embedment that could be a very useful group if we want to apply the embedment into the, to those areas 
and you firstly define them and then you just apply that without needing to use them again or select them again. So to do that, we repeat the procedure. We're gonna go and zoom in here. I'm gonna go select entities. This time we have areas. Select from full, okay. And we pick this, all of the areas here. We got to fit view. We can zoom in the model again. And we can select these other areas. Although we don't see them, they can be very intuitive. So there we go. We got a fit view again. We hit OK. We go to plot areas. We'll see that we only have these areas. Now we'll go to select component assembly, create component, embedment. 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 And the entities are areas. We hit OK. Now we go to select everything again. Fit the view. And we have two components created. Now we're going to create a third one, which is going to be the. is going to contain the two key points in which we apply the force on this model. So we're going to zoom in. We're going to go to select entities. We're going to hit key points. From full. OK, I'm going to select that one and that one. We hit OK. If we go to plot key point, key point, we're going to see these two key points. Now we're going to, going to create the assembly again, the component. Create component. We're going to hit, put here forces. Key points. I'm going to hit OK. So now we're going to select component select everything again, go back, plot volumes, and these are, uh, as we said, you can create components with anything, so we're also going to create components with elements. If you plot the elements here and zoom in, you'll see there's a lot of elements, and we're going to create a component with three elements of the exact joint or corner of the junction between the two beams. These regions could be interesting when you're analyzing the tensions and the concentration factors. So we're going to do select entities, elements, from full, OK. I'm going to select this one, two, three, and again one, two, three elements. We hit OK, look, look at it. We're not quite the ones that we want, but we'll just consider that these are the ones that we're interested in. We're going to create a component assembly again, create component, corners, corners, and they're going to be elements. Okay. We're going to select everything and we're going to do a volume plot fit view. Okay, then we have created these components. To list them, you can go to select components, list components. You can comp list them by component name, by entity type, and other options. We're going to use component name. We'll see corners, embedments, force, and weldings. If you hit one of them, select one of them, let's say weldings, and click OK, we're going to see what's the name and the type and if it has subcomponents. Another good option here is, well, to select them, you can go, we say we're in volumes, to select a component, you go to components, pick, select component and assembly, component by name, and we go to welding, which is the volume. And soon as if we go to vol plot volumes, we'll see that we have selected on the volumes this particular component. Select everything again, go back. A good, very useful tool is to go and check at the component assembly. Pick components from full. This is a very interesting tool because it gives you this select components menu. And if you just go and click anywhere, you will see where the component is, and what's it, what is it made of. So if you select this one, 
it counts one of maximum four and then again the component name you will go and select let's unselect all of them if you move you can see it selects these two and it tells you it's corners there's two because it's very close to the other one you can say yes I want corners and you can actually visualize it in the model and then here are the corners at, at, the, at the end we have the embedments and here at the beginning we have forces to delete a component we can just go in component assembly and we hit delete components or assembly and for example let's say we want to delete the embedment we hit ok then when we go again to list the components we'll see that that component has disappeared so for right now we're gonna finish this tutorial I'm gonna hit quit quit no save and now you know how to create a component and use create them list them delete them and basically use the components in ANSYS uh, these components are very useful and we recommend you to use them to organize your models we would like to thank you for your attention and we hope you enjoyed this presentation for more tutorials please visit our community and follow us on the social media